What's up everyone and welcome back. So today's video is a topic that is very prevalent in the news and also very much disputed, and that's global warming. To simplify the theory, if we continue to burn fossil fuels at the rate we currently are, then the average temperature of the earth will continue to rise. And we are already starting to see the effects of this in the polar regions of the world, where glaciers are slowly but surely melting away. But what will happen when all the ice finally melts? Would the entire planet be flooded? Well, realistically, scientists say the ice won't all melt for upwards of another 5,000 years. But when it does, the Earth will be a very different place than it is now. In total, there are 5 million cubic miles of ice all over Earth. If that were to melt, the first and most noticeable differences would be the levels of water in the sea which would rise about 216 feet, or 66 meters, globally. And that insane increase in size causes a lot of huge problems for society. You see, most major cities around the globe are located on the coast of whatever country they are in. This is because it allows for more trade routes and transportation via the ocean. That being said, if the water levels were to rise by a whopping 216 feet, most big cities would be underwater. Let's start with North America. Here we have cities like New York, Boston, Washington DC, and more right on the ocean. If all the ice melted, you could say goodbye to all three of those, along with the entire east coast, the whole state of Florida, and the same thing goes for any cities in the Gulf of Mexico. Over on the west coast, hilly cities such as San Francisco would be nothing more than a scatter of tiny islands and the central valley next to San Francisco would be one giant bay. Down in South America, most of the land lost would be in the northern and southern regions of the continent. The Amazon basin in the north and the Paraguay river basin in the south would become massive inlets of water, wiping out iconic cities such as Buenos Aires, Rio de Janeiro, Georgetown, and more. Over in Europe, the effects will really be felt across almost every major city. Starting from the north, Helsinki, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Dublin, London, Venice, and more will all be affected in some way, with most of them being completely underwater. Over in Asia, almost all of its population is living on the coast. Land that is currently inhabited by 600 million people would all be underwater forcing all of them to migrate further inland. Could you imagine 600 million people having to give up their home and move to a new city? Things down in Australia would be basically the same as everywhere already described, but there is something unique about Australia and that is it would gain a new massive inland sea in the southern part of the continent. Pretty cool. The continent that would lose the least amount of land would be Africa, seeing as it is so massive. However, the rise in Earth's temperatures may make the entire place too hot to live, but I'll get back to that. Perhaps the best thing to come out of this would be that Antarctica would now be a livable place, no longer covered in most of the world's ice, in time people could travel here and start to set up towns and communities. After all, it is the fifth largest continent. And in theory, it does sound nice, but a rise in sea levels is only one of many problems that the melting of the world's ice would bring. As a matter of fact, the rise in sea level wouldn't even be their biggest problem. Currently, the ice helps keep the Earth at an average livable temperature of about 61 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius. It does this by reflecting a lot of the light from the sun back into space. If all the ice were to melt, then it would be open ocean all around the globe, allowing for a drastic increase in temperature. Some estimates say that the average temperature on Earth could get as high as 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 27 degrees Celsius, and this is where things turn deadly. Of the last five mass extinctions on Earth, four of them were caused by climate change produced from greenhouse gas. The only mass extinction that wasn't caused by climate change was the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Just let that sink in. 
One of the most notorious cases happened 252 million years ago. Carbon released into the atmosphere caused the average temperature to rise by a simple 5 degrees. This rise in temperature triggered the release of methane gas in the Arctic, resulting in the death of 97% of life on Earth. So I think it should be clear by now that something needs to be done. Assuming these scientists know what they're talking about, and I believe that they do, then changes need to be made to protect our planet. Even though these major changes in temperature will take hundreds of years to occur, life-threatening increases could happen in just the next 100 years, due to the yearly increases we are already experiencing. And this is a big motivating factor for people like Elon Musk to colonize Mars, their goal being to try and save the human race from extinction. And with the path we are currently headed down, hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to subscribe to see more content similar to this, and drop a like down below. For this video, let's try to hit 2000 likes. Also, if you want a chance at being featured, leave a comment down below with future video suggestions, and check the description for important links.